There's been a lot of debate and controversy regarding who is the greatest player of all time, or the GOAT. Especially with the Last Dance documentary being released, people have been quick to voice their opinion. A lot of these opinions coming from players in the 80s and 90s. A lot of them like to downplay the game of current stars like LeBron James or Stephen Curry, claiming that their era is the best and that this current era is too soft. Others on the opposite side of the spectrum have been praising today's era in an attempt to downplay their own shortcomings and minimize the accomplishments of others. There have been countless debates and we can go on and on, but at the end of the day, we'll still feel the way we feel. All the scenarios are hypothetical and cannot be proven either way. So instead of chiming in on this tired debate, in an attempt to add absolutely nothing to this argument, I will instead ponder about something else. Something even more absurd, with absolutely no concrete evidence. So we always hear the LeBron or Jordan, LeBron or Jordan debate. But actually, Dennis Rodman seems to be the most outspoken of the Bulls in regards to LeBron. Rodman, who was both Jordan's teammate and opponent, claims Jordan is the best and would average 50 in today's era. He claims that LeBron has no moves and that he and Pippen could shut him down easily. So let's see if he can put his money where his mouth is and actually stop LeBron. But one-on-one -on -one is so basic. Let's make it two-on-two -two and let's give him a teammate. Someone he is good friends with. How about Kim Jong-un, the supreme leader of North Korea? So Kim was a fan of Michael Jordan and the Bulls growing up. So when Dennis Rodman visited North Korea, they apparently hit it off. They were partying together and going to different events. So I think they would make a good team as far as chemistry. Now LeBron needs a teammate, and since there's one world leader on the other squad, it's only fair to have one on his team as well. So I decided on Xi Jinping. These two don't have an actual relationship that I'm aware of, except in memes. But he did side with China and Jinping by default, when he basically told anyone discussing the Chinese and Hong Kong politics to shut up and dribble because he didn't want his money affected, which is the opposite of his motto, more than an athlete. But I digress. Like most hypothetical matchups, we assume all parties are in their physical and athletic prime. Now it's important that this game be held in a neutral area. Having supreme leaders on the team can lead to unfair advantages if home court is your home country and you are the ruler of said country. So let's have it occur in a place that only cares about soccer or football and doesn't give a shit about basketball. England. Now that could be a false statement, but their overall basketball talent as a nation isn't helping their case. So now that the political power is essentially neutralized, it should be all about pure basketball skills and athletic ability. Now let's add some stakes to this game. Let's give the winner something they really care about. The winner of this game gets to control the media narrative. If LeBron and Jim Ping win, they can convince the public that hairlines can reappear naturally and Jin Ping doesn't look like Winnie the Pooh. If Ronman and Kim Jong-un win, they can convince the public that the 90s is the greatest era of all time and that Kim Jong-un is not a Katy Perry fan. So let's get into the game. When it comes to the LeBron and Rodman matchup, I think it's clear who is the better player. Rodman was a beast. He gave his heart to the game. He was full of energy, one of the best, if not the best, rebounders and defenders. With that said, he's essentially a role player. One of the best role players to ever do it, but still a role player. Not one who should be criticizing another player's lack of moves. Now, you may not agree with LeBron being the greatest, but the fact that he's in the discussion shows how great he is. He is one of the best all-around players in history. He's a freak of nature, and he has the skills and basketball IQ to complement his raw athleticism. 
Rodman, on the other hand, is never in the discussion and built his career pretty much around his athleticism and effort. So let's go with the harder matchup now. Kim Jong-un grew up a basketball fan, so I assume he would play some basketball. He also has the resources to improve his game. On the other hand, basketball is a pretty big deal in China, which is why the whole controversy with the NBA happened. But in my two-minute Wikipedia research, I could not find anything on Jinping and his experience with basketball. Therefore, I'm going to have to give this matchup to Kim. However, overall, I think LeBron's dominance will prove to be too much to handle, and his team would win. Rodman couldn't really score outside the paint. Well, he couldn't really score, period. And we all know LeBron's offensive capabilities. So, congratulations to LeBron and Xi Jinping on winning this game and taking over the free press. So this turned into more of a Rodman bashing than I anticipated. I actually really respect his game and him as a person. He's a very interesting individual and was probably the best part of the whole Last Dance documentary. It's just a little ridiculous when people continue to make bold claims that they can't back up. People continue to debate hypothetical situations that can never have a definitive conclusion. And I guess the reason why people continue to do this is because it's so fun. I had so much fun theorizing what would happen. Even if I can't prove any of this, it's still fun to think about. And it's fun to hear others debate about it. So are these debates pointless? Yes. If you're trying to prove a point or trying to persuade someone, yes. Completely pointless. But if you're just having these debates for the sake of debate, for the pure joy of it, then no. These provide for us the value of entertainment. And boy, as sports fans, do we need that right now.